Well, I first want to uh, welcome uh, Jesse Gooding. Uh, the Jesse Gooding has been a longtime friend of mine, a leader in this community, an icon in the civil rights movement. When I served as mayor, uh, Jesse was the head of the NAACP. He first became the head of the NAACP in 1982 and served through the year 2002. Um, he's had a tremendous impact on this community. And when I served as mayor, uh, he was one of the, the wisest advisors to all the leadership in the community and was kind enough uh, to be both my friend and advisor to me as mayor. We got to work on a couple issues together. Um, and today, we're sitting down because it is soon going to be the 61st anniversary of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech Amen. at the Lincoln Memorial. And Jesse Gooding was there, present for that speech, so we're going to get his perspectives and his memories. But first, I want to start by welcoming you and thanking you. Jesse, you have been a leader in our community, um, and you have been a leader for the whole community. Uh, when I was elected mayor, you were kind enough uh, to, to, uh, to take me under your wing, to give me advice. Uh, your wisdom got us through uh, many rough patches in the city. Uh, whenever there was a crisis in the city, I knew I could count on you. But your time as a community leader was extraordinary. You made a huge difference in our community. Mike, I've always felt proud of you. That's very kind of you. Uh, when you became mayor, I, I welcome you to the community. And we have, I hope we stayed friends until now. Absolutely. Uh, you was a good mayor. Thank you. You've been a good congressman. Thank you, Jesse. Oh, yeah. We have disagreed on a few things. But, Absolutely. <laughs> but that's part of living. Absolutely. And, that, and, you, and you have yeah, made but, me better uh, for it hey, every time okay. you've told but me. But you, you have to be frank with me. If I don't think it's right, I'll call you, will not and, and that helps me. It does. Yeah, yeah. I have to tell a story of one of the early challenges I had as mayor and how Jesse's wisdom made a difference. When I was elected in um, 1994, uh, I, I took office and the KKK announced that they were going to come to town. They weren't from here. They were coming from out of town and they were going to be at Courthouse Square. And I was all over the community telling people not to come. And you called me. And you said, Mayor, I want to talk to you. And we, I went and sat down. And you said one of the most wise things I've ever heard. Uh, you said, Mayor, you can't tell people what not to do. You have to give them something to do. Amen. And then you said, we need to have an event the next day. And we need to, you said it's biblical, we need to symbolically clean the square um, of their filth. And we need to tell the people not to come. And you joined with me. I, I agreed and I followed you. We had a press conference where we said, don't come down and see these evil people. Come the next day. And it was amazing. Hardly anyone was there when the KKK came to town. And the next day, there was an outpouring of the community. People were crying. They were on their hands and knees, scrubbing the square, all because of your vision. And it worked. Mike. Uh I, I always try to think about things, and I know it was a stinking thing that the Klan came here, and I tried to figure out what the best strategy to deal with the situation based on the, uh, the reality, really, based on reality. So I uh, made you talk. And you tell the story correctly. The next, next day or next time after that, we uh, turn out and clean the city. It's amazing. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for being a good mayor. Uh, I, I certainly appreciate that. Well, I learned a tremendous amount from you that day, but so did the whole community. <laughs> Give them something to do. <laughs> I, I want to say this. I'm almost 100 years old now. Wow. And some things I won't remember. But the things that I, can, I will remember, I will relate them as truly as I can. Excellent, excellent. Well, and so that story is in this book, um, Freedom and Justice for All, My Life and Dayton Civil Rights History. Uh, that's about Jesse Gooding's life. And 
Um, the author interviewed both Jesse Gooding, which tells his life story, and several other community leaders. And in this, I was one of them, and they tell that story. Yes, sir. Another story that's told in here is your trip to Washington for Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream. Amen. Now, in this, in this book, I actually say I had the opportunity to hear your story and that everyone should hear it, and that's why we're here today, so yes, that sir. other people can hear you tell this story. But uh, what I thought was fascinating is you started with, you were here in Dayton, and you, you drove a car down to Cincinnati, and you got on a train and uh, rode through the night to Washington. Well, a group of us, I was in an organization called Congress of Racial Equality at that time. And we decided to charter a, a, a coach uh, to accommodate the, the Dayton crew. So we all drove from Dayton and parked in Cincinnati overnight. We got on the train to go to Washington. <laughs> and we sang and, and prayed. And, and, but uh, on the way to Washington, the conductor wasn't too friendly to us. He tried to freeze us out. Oh, no. Going. Yeah, going. I, I, I think I'm right. Or was it going or coming? We're going. And we got, we got to Washington early next morning. And when we got to Washington, it was, uh, I said, this thing ain't going to be nothing. But that's about 7.30, uh, 8 o'clock. Boy, the buses caught coming in by the hundreds. And after that, uh, over 2,000 people showed up. So in the beginning, you've been to many events for civil rights, including held many yourself. Um, so when you got there, you thought this was just going to be a normal rally, not a big, not a big deal. Yeah, I just, I just thought that people wasn't going to accommodate it because it, 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 I was disappointed. I tell you, how I got disappointed. And I don't know whether I tell that story in the book, uh, but Michael Torch had organized. Uh, uh, we were demonstrating at Wright Coombless. And McIntosh had said there are a thousand people going to be here. And, uh, and about 50 folks showed up. <laughs> and after that, uh, I kind of lost the faith, uh, faith in whether folks were going to show up. So I thought it might be one of them deals in Washington, but I, I was wrong. So you said you get there, and you, you, you have buses that take you from Union Station in Washington to the, the Lincoln Memorial. Right. And as you're getting there, there's other buses, and there's people, and they, you said they just kept coming. Oh, they just kept coming. But when I first got there, they weren't there. And we were probably among the first to get there. Uh, but after a while, boy, the buses came from every direction. Now, one thing that you also said that I thought was interesting is that the crowd was diverse. They were from all over the country. Um, there were union people. Uh, there were black and white people coming together, that it was a very diverse crowd. Yeah, oh, the black and white folks were there. Uh, I believe it was probably more white folks than black folks were there. That, that was at that one. There, there was a lot of white folks there. In fact, there were white people on our on a, a coach going to a, a Washington from Dayton. Uh, uh, I might have been some of them in New York, but I, I remember the white folks was on there. Uh, uh, we sang, and I remember we had a guy on there, boy, could really sing and arouse you pretty good. But we made it there. Now, there were lots of speakers that day. Um, yes, sir. many that you were telling the story that many people came to the podium yes, and they sir. had messages and they were received yeah. by the crowd. Yeah. But it was pretty much normal of, of people coming up and giving. Yeah, their real normal. It wasn't no pretty well. No, it was normal. I mean, the one thing really impressed me, besides Martin, Martin impressed everybody. 
But then a little young boy got up there. Uh, and he impressed me. You know what that young boy was? Who? John Lewis. Oh, my goodness. Wow, I was, and I was honored to serve with yeah, him. Yeah, he got up there and he really, they, they were kind of afraid to let him up there, but he, he really did all right. That's great. Uh, yes, yeah, so there was several speakers. Uh, Roy Wilkins, Jim, Jim Farmer. But, but the impressive people to me was Martin Luther King and John Lewis. So Martin Luther King takes the podium, and you said initially he's reading from a script. He's got a speech that he's yeah, reading. Right. And, and, and how was the crowd reacting? Oh, he was aroused. He, he, he set the crowd on fire. That's why. And, and set me on fire, too. <laughs> and then he left the script, you said. Hmm? And then he left the script. Yeah. And then he told his story of I Have a Dream. Yeah, that's, that's when they, he really got to the folks. Yeah. I bet people were transfixed. Yes, sir. Right. It, that was a great day. And I think a lot of folks, that changed America, really. That speech helped change America. Because we all came back black and white fighting. Uh, that, that Selma and all the rest of the things grew out after that March on Washington. And the, and the black politicians became more active, getting elected. Opportunities became, became more for us. I remember I uh, uh, went to, uh, was that Swinner and Shaney and Goodman when they got killed? Uh, I went to Mississippi. It, uh, Reverend Lucas organized some, uh, I organized clothes and, and uh, food to take to Mississippi. And Lucas paid for the truck to take it in. And uh, three of us took him down there, it was frightening. Uh, we had to, we had to, notified the FBI to keep check on us. Wow. But we made it down there, and I got real frightened while I was down there. There were white kids down there from the north uh, helping organize voters' registration. And we were out in the black community, and we pulled up to a I pull up to the train. I, I drove a car and we had a truck. So we could drive the truck, car while we was there. So we used, I mean the truck. We, we drove the car. The white boys in there with us and we went in the black quarters and we was coming back out of the black quarters. The train was coming. And I pull up to the railroad track and the boy, the white boy, said, oh, get me, don't do that. And why? Somebody get behind you and somebody get on side and drive you in that train. Oh my goodness. I was ready to get out of Mississippi. <laughs> I'll bet, I'll bet. But that kind of thing happened to us back in those days, Turner. Well, one of the things that you said after Martin Luther King spoke <clears throat> is that it wasn't just the energy before that it was the energy that was after. You said you believed that things were really going to change now and that that yeah, crowd we, we left. Were, after King, we were trying to change before, but he gave us more security that, that we should keep fighting. And that's what we did. So from an event where you weren't so sure it was going to be important, to an event you leave where you believe it's going to change the country. Yes, that's what happened. Absolutely what happened. Changed the world, really. Yeah, King changed the world. He didn't only change our country. He, he made, made it uh, a new look for the whole world. And I'm afraid, though. I'm an awful afraid. And I hope, hope you understand why I said that. Why are you afraid now? I'm afraid of the political climate. Yeah. 
The play climate stink right now. It really does. I, yeah. I can tell you every day. And uh, I tell the world that uh, we need these young folks need to get out and start thinking. We used to, during my young years, I, we sat down. I had a job. We spent, after I, I work from uh, 7 to 4.30. I might stay up to 11 or 12 o'clock trying to figure out how to deal with the system. And that's what some of these young folks need to do, both black and white. How to deal with this system and how to make it better. That's what I'm talking about, to that's make right. the system better. That's right, like you do every day. Well, one of the things that you said <clears throat> that struck me was why you went. You said you wanted to make certain you were counted. And, and that's what you were talking about every day. You were somebody who made certain you were counted. And yeah, you right. made a difference. Right, I, I hope I did, Lord knows I do. Well, when President Obama was being sworn in at his inauguration, I, I asked if you'd be my guest. You were one of my guests. I want to thank you. What was so great is I wanted a person yeah. who had seen Martin Luther King at the Lincoln Memorial yeah, stand not, you know, in front of the Capitol while President Obama was sworn and in. And I think that's why we, you still understood me, and I think that's why we stayed friends. Yeah. Uh, I'll never forget that trip, too. We, we could, um, uh, I got Mayor Dixon to drive me. Oh, excellent, yeah. excellent. And we, we drove there, and we uh, participated in a lot of activities while we were there, and I want to thank you and let the world know I thank you for anybody, uh, giving me invitation. Well, in 1963, you stood facing the Lincoln Memorial and listened to Martin Luther King Jr. say, I have a dream. And in 2009, you stood That's facing it. the Capitol with the Lincoln Memorial <coughs> behind you, watching President Obama raise his hand and been sworn in as president. That, that was part of that dream. It's pretty excellent. Yeah, and you invited me to it. Had to have you there. Yeah, and I thank you. Well, on behalf of the community, uh, you have been an unbelievable leader. You have changed not only the country, uh, but also our community. And <clears throat> I'm, um, I understand that you're going to be honored by your high school. Amen. <laughs> and your high school is going to honor you for your leadership, uh, your role in civil rights, and really what you've done for, for the whole country. And they have asked me to present a proclamation to you as your congressman, honoring you as you make this journey to the high school to give, uh, to get the award. And so as part of the proclamation, we have put in it, whereas Jesse Gooding is the original, one of the original foot soldiers of the civil rights movement alongside Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and led a group from Dayton to the March on Washington, D.C. in 1963, he set out to right the wrongs he witnessed and experienced in his community by combating racism and discrimination in the military, law enforcement, housing, employment, and education, and leading the fight to desegregate Dayton Public Schools. Amen. We are all in and deep gratitude you so for you. Much. I thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Bless, me. Hey, bless you, sir. Bless you. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll set this down for you. Jesse, um, now that we've had an opportunity to think about it, to talk about it, is there anything else you can think of that day or during that trip that strikes you? The big thing after that, opportunities to open, and all the civil rights groups seem to get been more uh, stronger. And, and dedicated to do something. And uh, the white side decided to work more closely with us, like you, after the civil rights movement. Uh, the Yellow Spring folks, the UD folks, they started working with us real close. In fact, uh, I organized a, a group called Force. You might have read a little bit in my book about it. And we, we really tried to make change in the Dayton and, and the state. Uh, we didn't only hold it in Dayton, we moved over to the state. 
And I, would, I think we made a little dot. I, I don't know how much, but a little. Well, you made a tremendous impact. And, and Jesse, on behalf of the entire community, I want to thank you again for your incredible service. And personally, I want to thank you for your friendship. And I want to appreciate you for recognizing me. Uh, most folks don't give a damn what you did. But I appreciate you recognizing me. And I want you to, I'm going to let you know I'm going to call you when I. You, you I should. Disagree. I still need your help, Jesse. But I'm. You need yeah. to. You need to give me advice. Yeah, and you. You said you've been a good soldier when I call you. Absolutely. And I'll be calling you. I look forward if to. If I'm alive, I'm just uh, almost two years from my hundred. That's wonderful. Congratulations, and you look great. Thank you. You look excellent. Okay, thank you. Thank you. It's it's that it's that great spirit you have. Yeah.